Hi guys, and welcome to my video on nutrition. So I put on my Instagram the other day, a little poll for you guys to fire in any questions that you might have on how I eat, um, what a footballer's diet is like. And so I've got a ton of questions here. I'm gonna try and answer them all for you. And um, yeah, let's get into the first question. How strict is your diet? Now, I'm not gonna lie, I would say it is really strict, especially of late because there's been so many games, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, and we need to eat properly to recover and fuel the body. So you can't really get away with eating too many sugary foods. Back 10, 12 years ago when I was 18, youth team days, it was very, very, I'd say, eat whatever I fancied. So crisps, chocolate and whatnot, and you can sort of get away with it back then. But nowadays, look, everything I buy is organic. It's very high in fruit and veg. And the reason is, the reason for it being organic, even though it is a little bit pricier, it's just because it's all natural, there's no chemicals in the foods, and the foods have more nutrients. How has your diet changed over the years? I'm someone who's experimented with a lot of different diets, tried a lot of different things. So when I was 18, 19, like I said, was eating pretty, pretty much anything. And then as I started to build up knowledge and started teaching myself on what foods are good for the body, I started experimenting with all sorts of diets. So I did the keto diet, I tried being vegan for a few months, I tried a paleo diet, I even sort of tried the carnivore diet where you just strictly eat meat. My diet now is really well balanced and well rounded so I do eat meat, I eat fish, high in fruit and veg and that's really what works best for me. Do you have a nutritionist that helps you? Yeah so this is really where I got most of my knowledge and education from. I saw a guy called Scott Robinson three or four years ago. He runs a high performance lab where they do blood tests, sweat testing, comes up with an individualized uh, nutritional program for you after doing these tests. Since then he built a program for me, put it together, and that's what I've been following for the last three or four years. What do you eat before training and games? And what is your ideal meal? So, on the lead up to games, Thursday, Friday, Saturdays, it, it will vary a little bit. So, on a Thursday, it'll be sort of like a normal training day, high protein, high carbohydrates. But then, on a Friday, the carbohydrates that I do eat will be high in glycemic index, which means that the energy is released into your bloodstream quicker than foods that are lower in glycemic index. And this is a common mistake that I see with footballers. So a lot of people out there, when it gets to Fridays and Saturdays on game days, they're still eating the brown rices, the brown pastas, which are low in glycemic index. But you wanna be getting on the white rices, the bagels, just because you're gonna have, you're gonna feel more energetic when you do actually get into the game. Also, the protein side of things, on a Friday and a Saturday, I'll only have meats that are very lean. So no red meat, it's too high in fat. No salmon, and I'll just try and keep it, you know, chickens, turkeys, white fishes such as sea bass, cod, just because the fat slows down the rate at which the carbohydrates are absorbed into the bloodstream. Do you drink a lot of water? How much? Yeah, I'd say on average I drink about four to five liters a day. Being hydrated makes such a big difference. When I'm not hydrated, I don't feel as focused, I don't feel as energetic, I don't feel like I can even recover as well. When you go into a training session or you go into a workout, get on the scales before the session. Say for example, for me, I may be 97 kg before the training session. Whatever I am after this, say for example, I'm at 95.5 kg now, that means that I would have lost 1.5 kilograms in water weight. So I need to replenish myself with around 1500 milliliters of water to get back to that level and get back to being hydrated. Also, when it comes to hydration, I'm, I've, I was very prone to getting cramp. And now I've actually got a drink that I specifically drink for cramp. It's high in magnesium, high in potassium, high in sodium. If anyone struggles with cramps in the second half of games or in training sessions. What do you eat after a game? After a game, it's crucial to get the right foods in. As soon as the game's finished, a high protein carbohydrate shake, that's literally as soon as you get back into the dressing room. When I get home, I've gotta eat healthy. Can't just have what I want because I've played a game. My muscles don't like sugar. My go-to meal for me is sort of salmon teriyaki 
in, in noodles with um, a stir fry mix. It's high in veg, antioxidants, high in protein with the salmon. It's got fat in there, high in omega-3, and also the noodles provide me, myself with a hit of carbohydrates. Later on in the evening, before bed, I'll also have a shake. Casein protein helps muscle rebuild overnight. Some more carbohydrates and some more fruit. How was your diet during lockdown? How difficult was it? Okay, so for us during lockdown, not much changed really. The only thing that did change was eating at the training grounds. We couldn't, you know, sit in a canteen next to each other. The chef would make us food after training, would take it home. For me, I pretty much get to the supermarket every day anyway, or every other day. I like to get everything fresh. Pretty much eat exactly what I was eating before lockdown. I was probably eating more healthily because restaurants were shut, so I wasn't going out once a week or once every fortnight like I may do before, and I was, I was forced to cook. So yeah, it's, um, it didn't really change too much, to be fair. Do you eat a lot of fruit and vegetables? Yeah, so I do eat a lot of fruit and veg. Every morning in my shake, fruit and veg. Um, lunch times, I have vegetables, and most evenings I'll have veg. I won't have veg on the lead up to a game, so on a Friday, night and a Saturday morning because bulky veg such as broccolis, cauliflower, they slow down the rate at which we actually absorb carbohydrates. But throughout the week and after games, I'll have a lot of fruit and veg because they're high in antioxidants. So it helps with inflammation, helps reduce the risk of diseases, heart disease, cancers, etc., and also um, reduces stress. So they're the main reasons I'll have fruit and veg, just not really as much on a Friday and Saturday. What is your daily calorie intake? Okay, so on a rest day, which would be predominantly Wednesdays and Sundays, my calorie intake will be a little bit less because I won't be training as much. So I'd say on that day, it could be around 2,400 calories. In the build up to a game, so on a Friday, it's probably when it's at its peak, which is around 3,000 calories. Try and get as much energy as possible for the game the next day. And on a training day, I'd say it would be around 2,700 calories. But I don't really now count my calories as much as I did before because I've just got so used to knowing what to eat, when to eat it. And um, I think if you do it for a few weeks, a couple of months, you will start to understand, okay, this, is, this protein shake has got 250 calories in my lunch, 400 calories, and then you'll just get more, more and more familiar with what you can and can't eat. What is your favorite cheat meal? I have got, believe it or not, a really sweet tooth. I do love a good dessert. I'd say my favorite dessert would be a Victoria sponge cake. In terms of meal itself, Chinese, a good Chinese, you know, literally just stack it all on the plate. Sweet and sour chicken, crispy chili beef, noodles. Satay chicken, you name it, that's, I think that's my, uh, my go-to cheat meal. How difficult is it to stay disciplined through a season? I'd say it's not that difficult at all, especially this season because there's been so many games. So if you do slack or you do go out, eat sugary foods, junk food and whatnot, you probably will notice that you'll feel a bit stiffer the next day, you won't recover in time. I'd say the only time that I do eat what I want, it's probably the first seven to 10 days in the off season. What do you miss most that you can't eat? For me, look, I'm a massive, I'm a massive cake lover. So I've got to say carrot cakes, Victoria sponges, chocolate cakes. Um, don't really miss the sweets and the chocolate. Um, but yeah, definitely cake. What do you eat on a day of a game? All right, cool. Wake up around 9 a.m., have breakfast, and that breakfast will be a protein shake, which will consist of strawberries and bananas for the hit of fruit, three scoops of protein, around 25 grams of protein, some almond milk, blend all that. Then I will have a bagel, because it's high in glycemic index, with strawberry jam on it, and also butter. The butter is the hit of fats. I'll also have a shot of turmeric and ginger. I'll have a, a drink that's high in electrolytes, and then that will be my breakfast. Then I will not eat again until around half 11 and now this is the pre-match meal and all i'll have is two sea bass fillets and white rice so no fat and no veg just because it will slow down the rate at which the carbohydrates are absorbed and i want to feel as energetic as possible and also last as long as possible in the game without feeling tired sea bass is the hit of protein the white rice is the hit of carbohydrates i'll also put tabasco sauce on it and 
a fair amount of Himalayan rock salt. And what that will do is help with any muscular cramping. What are your thoughts on veganism? Does it work? I tried veganism. I actually noticed that my body weight went down by four or five kg. So currently I'm 98 kilos and I was around 92, 93 kilos when I was on the vegan diet. But not only that, my muscle mass also reduced. My body fat was higher and I was lighter. So I was essentially less powerful, less muscular. So yeah, it didn't really work great for me. Do you ever feel, what's the point? No, I don't ever feel like that because I've got goals, you know, and I'm trying to achieve my goals. No matter how hard things get, you know, injuries, setbacks, you always got to stay focused, stay disciplined, believe in yourself. The diet is a key component into achieving what I want to achieve. So yeah, I always try and eat as well as I can. Best healthy snacks. You can get real tasty healthy snacks now. There's um, grenade bars that are high in protein, taste unbelievable. They've got no sugar in them. I actually like nuts, so I can't eat them all the time because they're high in fat, but there's some really nice nuts you can get out there. There's actually like Mars protein bars and Snickers protein bars and stuff like that. So if you do crave something sweet, you can always have something like that. Also the grenade shakes, the milkshakes, they're really good. Um, they, they come in different flavors, vanilla, um, mint, chocolate chip, etc. Do you ever eat any fried foods? I rarely eat any deep fried foods. I fry a lot of my foods in extra virgin olive oil because it provides me with a hit of fat and it's actually a very good anti-inflammatory as well. Are you more disciplined with your diet after a game or after training? I don't think it changes too much to be fair. I think after a game, sometimes if I've got plans for the weekend with my mates or girlfriend or whatever, they then it can have an effect on how I do eat after a game. But even if I eat out in a restaurant, I'm always thinking, you know, maybe subconsciously like, let's get the veg in, let's get the protein in. Do you ever eat out? Well, listen, not lately because of lockdown, but before then I'd say, yeah, once, once a fortnight I'd eat out, try and keep it remotely healthy when I do. But yeah, you know, look, we're not robots. What do you drink? Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, if we've got a Saturday game, I'll have a shot of beetroot juice twice a day. So on a Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, Friday morning, Friday afternoon, and then twice on the game day. It helps to carry nitrates around the body. In theory, you should feel like you're able to run for longer, you have more stamina. I genuinely feel like it does work, so I've, I've done that for the last couple of years. I drink the donut water, but apart from that, drinks-wise, the, the better water brands, Evian water, Fiji water, they're more alkaline than the other cheaper brands, which can be, tend to be more acidic. You can check the back of the bottle, just check the pH of the waters. If it's below seven, it means it's acidic. If it's above seven, it's more alkaline. Obviously, on a game day, I have, you know, the Lucasades, the Powerades after the warm up during, during the games to keep myself feeling energized. Oh, and also green teas as well throughout the day have two or three, don't have any later than 4 p.m. because they're high in caffeine, but they're, um, they're great for information as well, so that's why I have them. What supplements do you take? I've got a lot of supplements in my cupboards that I take on a daily basis. All the usual stuff, vitamin A, C, high strength probiotic, omega-3s, turmeric shots, protein shakes, glucosamine and chondroitin. I think because I've got so many, and I wanna tell you exactly what each one does, I'll release a separate video on this. Most of them are from Healthspan Elite, which Team Sky use, and I'll really break them down for you and show you how you can implement them into your life and train them. All right, guys, that is a wrap. If you have any more questions that I've not been able to answer, please feel free to get in the comments below. Send me a DM on Instagram, and I'll try and give you as much information on it as possible. Also, let me know what videos you would like to see in the future, and I'll try and get them out for you guys. Anyway, it's been a pleasure and I'll see you in the next video.